Hello, welcome again. Um, this equation video is calculating your R1, R2. Now you're going to see R1, R2 um, in design and in testing. And it's really important to understand that there is a difference between the two. <clears throat> when we're designing, we want to know the resistance when the cable's running hot. And that is when it's operating, delivering the power we're expecting. And so that means we need to adjust the resistance um, for that temperature difference. Now, what you're going to need is this table here to make your life easier. There are other ways of calculating this using the resistivity equation and adjusting the temperature that way. But this is the way you're going to get taught in City and Guilds or EAL. So we'll go with this. Now, this table gives us a milliohm per meter value for different types of cables. Now, I don't know how good the zoom is. Go on, go on. Can you focus? There you go. So you can see for a, a one mil line conductor and a one mil protective conductor, we get a value of 36.2 ohms, milliohms per meter. Now just notice that this is at 20 degrees. And so the oper maximum operating temperature of say a thermoplastic cable is 70 degrees, thermosetting cable 90 degrees. And so there's you know, different factors to get to the limiting factor of those cables. <clears throat> They've made it really easy. They've given you um, another table. It's just one page away. Table I3. Uh, currently page 198 in the 18th edition on site guide. Um, and we've got, you know, little factors there. So you can see for a 70 degree thermoplastic cable incorporated in the cable or bunched, so, you know, uh, twin and earth or flex or whatever, we've got a factor of 1.2. And for a 90 degree cable, same conditions, we got one, uh, 1.28 and Therma setting insulation is also 1.28 because the important thing is the temperature. And that goes here. Other than that, it's just a value per meter, which is given in table I1, times the length of our circuit. Um, and we divide it by a thousand here to change it from milliohms to ohms. And that's going to give us the resistance of our live cable to our end of our circuit and then back again. Now, why do we need to know that? Well, because what we then do is add on the external part, which is the ZE, back to our substation. That's my drawing of a star winding. Um, and then once we've got that loop, we can understand, you know, how much current's going to flow if these cables touch here or here? You know, because we can calculate that and just use Ohm's law. So it'll be, you know, the voltage, which is probably going to be 230 volts, divided by the loop that we're interested in, impedance. And then we're going to get a current flow. And we need to know that. So we know that our protective devices are going to work accurately. Um, we can make sure our cable insulation isn't going to be destroyed before the uh, protective device operates. We can check the braking capacity of the protective device. Um, we can use the adiabatic equation to check how long our live cables will last during that event. Um, we, we need to know it. So let's have a go. Let's, uh, let's say I've got a 2.5, 1.5 twin and earth cable Twin and earth, or 6242Y as its code is known. Uh, and let's say it's 30 meters long. Well, let's, it's as simple as this. We're just going to plug those values in. First off, we just need to find out what the milliohm per meter value is for a 2.5, 1.5 cable. And when you have a look in that table, you'll see that it's 19.51 milliohms per meter. We times that by the length. 30 meters. Now, a twin and earth is a 70 degree cable, so we need the temperature factor for a 70 degree table, uh, cable. And when we have a look at table I3, we will see it's 
it's a real cheat that is the you know the alternative is a it's not that hard the other equation but you know it's a little bit trickier and it takes longer so we got to be thankful for the people that have kind of come up with these equations and the factors and the tables it takes a bit of getting used to but actually it saves you loads of equations so let's see what the r1 r2 is for that circuit 19.51 times 30 times 1.2 divided by a thousand so our r1 r2 would be 0.7 ohms. So that's part of uh, why we need to know it really. This uh, makes up the uh, fault loop impedance equation, which is our external, you know, the external part of this, the live and the earth externally to the building, plus the internal bit, which is the R1, R2, gives us our total loop impedance and this is the one we use to check our protective device is going to disconnect in time and um, we can use that to calculate the fault currents and like I say work out whether the braking capacity is adequate um, that's about all you need to know really um, there is one other thing this is for a situation where you already know your CPC size but sometimes you can end up going a bit kind of back and forth with design um, you choose a CPC, then you calculate your ZS and realize that it's too long, so the circuit doesn't comply, um, and it won't disconnect in time. So sometimes we might want to rearrange this and calculate uh, for this, which would tell us what cable to choose. So let me just explain that. There is a maximum loop impedance for every protective device. So, if we know what protective device we're going to use, um, and I'm going to say a 32 amp Type B, just purely because I know what the max ZS is of that off the top of my head. Uh, type B, now the maximum ZS, hmm, when we're in design mode, we need maximum ZS at that temperature, okay? So, in this case, it's 1.37 ohms, and you can find that table. Uh, 41.3 BS7671, around probably page 60 ish, I think. Um, but this is our kind of maximum ZS. Then, if we know our maximum ZE uh, for the property, we can start building an equation to calculate our maximum R1, R2. So if our max ZS is 1.37 ohms and let's say we've got a TNCS uh, earth in arrangement so that's at a maximum 0.35 ohms we take away that 0.35 ohms what we'll be left with is the maximum internal loop that we're allowed perfect so 1.37 minus 0.35 gives us an R1 R2 of 1.02 fan blinking tastic so now we know what our maximum R1, R2 is. So let's put that in instead of R1, R2. So max R1, R2, um, which is 1.02 now, is equal to milliohm per meter times length times the temp factor divided by a thousand. So now we just need to transpose this equation and make sure that um, we've got everything in the right place. So transposition says get anything downstairs, upstairs first. We've got to cancel out the thousand, so we're going to do the opposite function by itself. At the moment it's being divided, so I'm going to multiply it by itself. I've unbalanced it, I need to copy it that times a thousand and then we could leave it there it is balanced but there's no sense in doing it a thousand times a thousand is one it's not doing anything get rid of it now we need to isolate milliohms per meter uh, incidentally this is going to give us our maximum milliohm per meter now all of these things are being multiplied at the same time so we can divide them out at the same time 
So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So length, temp factor. I've unbalanced it, I've got to copy it. Length times temp factor. Now, we could put some values in from the example before. Um, so let's just tidy this up. And we've got our equation here. Um, so, shall we keep our length? Yes. 30 meters. And shall we keep our temp factor? Yes, because it's the same cable we're going to use, so 1.2. Now we've got numbers this side, so we can equate that and work out what our maximum milli ohm per meter value is. So 1000 times 1.02 divided by 30 times 1.2 gives us a maximum milliohm per metre number of 28.33. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so we need to go back to table I1. Now this is the largest number our cable can have and it's the live and the CPC. So what I'd suggest is you would have already kind of calculated your live cable. So I'd keep that the same. And then you're just going down this list until you find, you know, this is the maximum. So any number under this will work. And we go down, so we get a 2.5. So essentially all of the 2.5s work, which we thought really, 30 meters, is, you know, it's gonna comply. Um, so let's go with a 2.5 and a 1.5 again. So what did we really prove here? We proved that our circuit was all right in the first place, really. But this is another way we can do this. And as long as our value, the milliohm per meter value, is less than this, then it will work. So the only cables that won't work are 1.5 and a 1 mil. That won't work. A 1 mil and a 1 mil. That won't work. So this is the maximum value as long as you're live and your CPC you know, is under that, then this part of the design process would be okay. And we could go with that cable and then check all the other things to make sure they comply. And if everything's hunky-dory, then we found our cable. Yay. Um, but there we go, R1, R2, done for now. Thank you. See you next time. Don't forget the buttons.